Welcome back. You're still watching Guardians of Gaia on Channel 263, Connecting People and Planet. Let's join Shanice Furman and uh, Desmond Dessar and hear about the fight against industry and the notoriously polluted air of the South Durban Basin. We are vulnerable to so many things here in the South Durban. Industries can literally blow up in a matter of seconds and nobody would know what to do. We do not have an emergency plan. We are surrounded by industries. And breaking news, of course, at the Sahel, we continue to update you on a massive explosion which rocked the engine oil refinery in Durban South. We're actually tired, we're frustrated, we are feeling everything. I'm exhausted, I don't even know what to say anymore, honestly. Can you see the old roof is burning? Does this really benefit our community? Does it? That's the big question. And that's what fuels us to keep fighting. Fighting the giant. The South Durban area is really masked with petrochemical industries. In the mix are residents inhaling nauseous gases every single day. The mandate that they get is to produce and make sure that production happens regardless of how it impacts on the lives of people, how it impacts their health, how it impacts their day-to-day -day living. The nature of being exposed at high volumes to these things have a toll and nobody really speaks about the cumulative impacts of these, these chemicals. So what about a person who lives on the fence line of your industry? What about the people that cannot afford to get the medical attention that they need? People became ill and nobody understood why were they ill. In the 80s and 90s, we went through all the high levels of pollution. And then suddenly we had cough, we had cancer, we had asthma. Pollution has no boundaries. That's where communities really came together to stand together and demand the attention of government to, to intervene in this, in this instance. People were employed in the early 80s, thousands of people, and today it's only employing about 150. Throughout all the units, probably about 600 at the most, not at the refinery, but all over where they got their garages and all that. Maybe now under COVID, maybe about 300 full-time employees. What is that? If you said 10,000, if you said maybe 5,000, I'd agree. I'd stand for the people that would require their jobs. Government has really been an absent force. When we complain to the city, nothing really changes. Nothing gets done unless we put it in the media. We represent a lot of livelihoods. We'll log our complaints, you'll make sure everything is followed in terms of protocol. But when we see that there's no action, we take it immediately to Parliament. We are currently working with the Department of Environmental Affairs, Fisheries and Forestry over the South Durban pollution issues. Desmond was really self-taught. He sat with documents, things he didn't understand. He did not come from an environmental management background. He was formerly employed by industry. Once he had been fired from industry, he says, well, I've learned everything about how you impact the environment. Well, now I'm gonna take you on. No one knew what chemicals were being emitted until we started to get our own bucket brigade, taking our own air samples and linking them up through the high levels of cancer when we done the community surveillance. How many people were dying of cancer? How many people were affected with cancer? How many people had leukemia? How many people had asthma? And then in 2002, we got the first health studies done and that vindicated what we were saying without facts. And then we forced the government of Mandela and them to invest more in one of the most sophisticated monitoring stations ever seen in this country. And since then, we knew the only way to deal with this ship that never sailed was to dismantle it completely, piece by piece. A democratic country. What is a democratic country when we do not inform the policies that govern us? And so if we could change policy where it really comes from the people, then we can say we are moving in a step that's going to bring the change that we want to see.
We are now celebrating 25 years of environmental justice and we've grown so much. We've developed much more deeper campaigns through the Action 24 project. We got to explore this in a way where we could possibly change the legislation around climate change issues. That was Not on Our Soil by African Climate Reality Project, an ongoing reminder of the long-term commitment to organizing for environmental health. Next up, on our environmental education slot, we learn how to save energy by creating an insulated cooking box. Hey guys, my name is Tando from Project 90 by 2030. Today we want to be teaching you guys how to make an insulated cooking box. Just the materials before we begin. We want to need a box. Uh, the size of it should be big enough to fit in the larger size pot. We want to need some extra pieces of cardboard, some reflective material, some insulation material, a box cutter, and then lastly some tape. So how does the cooking box work? Well basically it works by helping to keep the temperature of the contents of the box the same for longer. Or while, whilst you're cooking, the insulated cooking box can help reduce your energy usage by removing it from the heat and keeping it in the box and allowing it to continue cooking. All right, so the next thing we need to do for our insulated cooking box is to now cut the pieces before we can begin assembling. So to do this, we're going to be needing our extra piece of cardboard. The first piece that we're going to cut is a circle, which is either the same size as the size of your pot lid or the bottom of your pot. The next piece that we're going to cut needs to be the diameter of the entire pot that you're going to be putting in the insulated box. And then lastly, <clears throat> we're going to be taking, cut another piece of cardboard which is exactly the same size as the bottom of our cardboard box that we're going to be putting our pot in. You then take your reflective material and you just cover one side of your cardboard pieces. Now the first thing we're going to need is our large box and we're going to take a little bit of insulation material just to cover the base of our box. Once we've covered the bottom of our box, the next thing is to take our piece of cardboard which is the same size as the bottom of our box and with the reflection side up, place this at the bottom. Then is to take our long piece of cardboard, make it into a circle and then fit it into our box. The next step is to then take our insulation material and put it around the sides of our pot. And then lastly, we've got our lid, which is our round piece of cardboard box. Put it on the top and then close our box. And there you have it. Let's work together to save energy and money. Thank you for being with us as we tackled South Africa's continuing struggle for clean, healthy and affordable energy. Join us again next week on Guardians of Gaia, connecting planet and people as we explore the environmental world and learn how people are working to save the planet and fight the systems that is killing it. Ghost don't play with a tap, wipe that car, don't wash it. Mother